Morning guys. It's still, we're in like our eighth heat wave. It's like a bazillion degrees. I am wearing clothes. It looks like I'm not, but I am wearing clothes. I promise you I'm not running around shooting videos naked. But I am pretty excited this morning because it's here. It's here. I finally did it guys. I finally did it. I got a blending board. So I went online and I was going to make my own. So I was checking out carding cloth, blending board cloth, all that stuff. Sorry, that's really loud. In Canada, everything is so expensive. And you can order them cheaper from elsewhere, but by the time you pay shipping, you're right back where you started from. So I found some options. I could either order one from Russia and wait a couple of months to get it for about, with shipping and everything, it was probably going to be about $150. Or I could go through Howard's Brush Outlet. They have a site on Etsy for their seconds, which are generally just cosmetic imperfections. It doesn't actually affect the use of the item. And they had some blending boards that were would have been the higher end, but they didn't have like the dowels for pulling off your roll eggs or the burnishing brush, stuff like that. But the blending board itself was there. So I ended up finding one for what I considered a reasonable price. I think it was about $200 with the shipping, which by the time I made my own, I was going to be about $200. And I'm just not that interested in DIY. Hold on, let me get this paper out of here. So here it is. So it was, oh yeah, it was $180. So not even $200. So it comes with the stand part and it does have the dowels. And here is the board. Ooh, it's nice. That's a really good size. Ooh, I'm so excited. I am so excited. So it was a, I wonder if they give me the details on here. Oh, there was supposed to be no foot included with this. They said plus gift on my invoice. So they threw in the foot. Well, that was sweet. That's even better. So now I have the foot to go with my blending board which means I can use it on a table, or I can use it on my lap, or I could just not use the foot at all. But you know, because I have it, I'm gonna put it on. I mean, who wouldn't, right? <laughs> so guess what I am doing today? I'm gonna be playing with my blending board. I am so excited. This could get very interesting, guys. So I thought, um, you know, Everybody likes to see me try new things. Let's give it a shot. So there it is with the foot attached. There's two places to put it. Of course, I got it crooked because, you know, it's me. So there we are. There is my new blending board. I can't tell you how excited I am. I have been shopping blending boards for probably a year now. And I've been pricing the DIYs and I've been pricing the various companies and trust me, I shopped and this was the best um, price per time frame for delivery that I could find because I didn't want to, when I finally took the plunge, I didn't want to have to wait a couple of months to get it. I'm not very good at waiting. I'm an instant gratification girl. Imagine that. <laughs> so let's grab some fibers reposition the camera and let's start playing with the blending board i'm so excited bobo found the paper from the blending board 
He's thinking it's the best toy in the world. Oh, now he's like, oh, are you filming me? Look how cute I am. All right, I'm set up. I got my coffee, got my blending board, and I just wanted to show you this. So I spun this. It is, I believe it is yak, actually. And I spun it with my Russian spindle. So I got it fairly fine. I'm actually really impressed with how well it came out. And then I plied it with this thread that I got from June for 10 bucks for the whole thing. And I'm like really super impressed with how well it came out and how it's got that really subtle sparkle from using that plying thread. I'm actually, I'm really impressed with myself. Yes, I'm bragging a little bit, but you know, I worked hard on it. All right, so, oops. That's the only problem with that thread is it gets everywhere. Let's move this over a bit. All right, so I found some fibers. I went digging through my fiber salad bags and I found some stuff I liked. So this is an alpaca. I believe this is bamboo from Feel. It feels, and shine, it feels like bamboo. I have a little bit of silk from one of my uh, fiber subscription boxes. This has to be merino because it's very, very soft, and this as well. And then this feels more like a Corydale. But this is the color palette I'm going to work with. And I'm going to try my blending board. So I'm going to put down the Corydale first. Having never done this, I don't know what to expect. This could be a complete disaster. Okay, I'm getting too much. <laughs> this is so awkward. Oh boy. All right, I'm gonna spread it out a little bit here. more. All right, that worked a little better. I don't have it sitting exactly square. Let's adjust that so it's not rattling on the table. It's so funny. I'm so used to working with fibers and equipment that when I'm using something new, I just, I feel so awkward until I get used to it. But yeah, I'll get there. Oops. Now I've got it going every which way. Oh, well. Okay. So then I'm going to... Nope. Not that way. What about this one? Well, that doesn't work either. That just peels it all off again. All right. I guess I need a different brush to burnish with. Or I need to embed it deeper into the spikes before I can do that. Probably just trying to do too much at once, which is very typical of me. So I'm just going to pull this loose stuff off and there, that works better. I need to pull it down harder so I'm not just laying it on it, but pushing it into the tines. See, I'm not a master of everything. I can be a complete ditz and klutz, just like anybody else. Anyway, I do have a K5 
cat brush handy. Imagine that. Yeah, I think I'll look that better with my burnishing brush. This one might just be too fine. The boys won't mind sharing, I'm sure. Especially since it's brand new and I haven't uh, used it on them yet. Okay, so first notes. I'm going to need a new slip pad if I'm using this on a table. Second note, way trickier than it looks. This is why I bought this brush. Check this out. Boop, boop, boop. <laughs> See, pushes up so you can get the hair out. In this case, it's wool. All right, so we got the Corydale. Then I want to put some alpaca. So I'm just going to take a little strip here. I'm going to try going with a lot less. I'm just doing it in layers because I was thinking I was going to try dizzing it off. I don't know if that'll work, but let's see what happens. because they look great on this. Could be a bald spot right here. I'm going to throw that in there. probably overthinking this a little too much. I'm probably overcombing it a little bit too much too. All right, so that's basically what I wanted to use for my base. Then I wanted to start putting stripies in it. So I'll put some green. This is how I learn everything, guys. I just jump right in there. Never done it before, so what? Uh, let's do this. I need some yellow. I need to be pulling down more. I think I'll be making roll eggs with this. All right, and then go in there. I'm going to use a little bit of bamboo. here. 
Oh, that's not a little bit. That's a lot bit. There we go. Now, here's what I hate about bamboo. <laughs> it gets everywhere. Oof, that's a big chunk. Okay, that's enough mucking about with that. And up my nose. Yeah, this is a mess, guys. But as it's my first attempt, I am not going to be too worried about it. Starting to get a feel for what I'm doing wrong, and I just have to figure out how to correct it. There we go. Whoops. Got my tails in there. Wow, you pulled a lot of fiber. All right, and then I still got bamboo up my nose. I'm going to add a little bit of silk. So I'm going to fluff this up. This just feels so weird. I can't even tell you like why it feels so weird. It just really does. It feels like a bizarre way to process fiber. And I'm going to have to figure out how to A, not make it bizarre and B, how to do it better. But hey, what the heck? It's my first attempt. I'm not expecting perfection. And I'm going to be the one spinning it, so, I mean, I'm used to dealing with issues, so that part's not going to bother me. We got a little bit left. I might as well work it in. Good mold spot there. A little more up there. A little more there. A little more there. All right. Burnish this all on. What a mess I've made. I could probably still diz this off, but I don't think I'm going to. I think I'm going to force myself to make roll eggs out of it. Because it is such a mess. All right. So I have my dowels. Okay, 
watch that beard. Oh, I do like the blend though. It's come out very fall-like. Oh, it looks like um, poplar trees. Oops. Looks like poplar trees in the fall. I do like that color blend. Oops, made it a bit too tight. I have a habit of doing that. I tighten my roll legs too much. I think I need to um, sand my dowels. Ugh! They're pretty sticky. So I'm going to go grab my knitting needles. I definitely have to give those a sand. I'll be right back. We're in luck. My knitting needles are long enough. So this one got a little beat up in the process of taking it off of the dowels. So let's try this again with our smooth knitting needles. To be honest, I don't even know where I got these knitting needles from. I assume they were left over from my mom's stash that she gave me at one point. Or it could be that I got them from a yard sale. Oh, and now these ones don't want to grip at all. Come on, babies. Somebody work with me here today. See? Not catching. Let's try again. This is where the fact that I have patience only for all things fiber comes into play. Because anything else, something would be flying by now. Not that I have a temper or anything. <laughs> uh, maybe a little bit of one. All right. There. I think I got it that time. I do really love the colors in this though. I'm going to make sure I don't tighten it too much this time. Just make sure I tuck in the tails. I think it's so pretty. It's so fall. It's like literally poplar trees and uh, birch trees in the fall. It's amazing. Wow. Oh, I can't wait to see how that spins up. Roll it into a little ball. Ooh, it's so pretty. I don't um, do color theory in a scientific way. I do it in a, I put them together and see how they look. <laughs> it's with all things. I'm very slapdash. Um, but you can study color theory if you don't feel that you have an eye for color. If you study color theory, you can develop an eye for color. I don't know if I do or don't have an eye for color. All I know is what I like and what I don't like. My bestie tells me that my uh, eye for color is pretty decent, so I'll accept that from her. Wait, I'm gonna should I have enough to make just one more. There's our next one. Now my color placement on the blending board is obviously crap, <laughs> but I will, uh, again, first time ever using a blending board. So um, the fact that I'm even getting anything done is to me amazing, and I'm not expecting perfection. Um, I call it perfectly imperfect. As soon as you give up the thought that 
everything is going to be perfect. You free yourself to experiment and discover things in the perfectly imperfect category. Some happy accidents produce amazing results. Sometimes it's crap, but you know, give it a shot. Embrace the chaos, as I always say. Give it a go. Yeah, all right. So, here are the results from my very first attempt. <laughs> Notice I said attempt. And here's the first one. Let me just blow that one up. My first attempt of using a blending board. Um, obviously, it's not something that I picked up magically. Pooh, I can do it. <laughs> but I am going to spin this up. And we will see what the end result is like. So here we are. I just uh, spun it up really quick, long draw, and uh, and de-implied it from applying bracelet. And it still has that. I do love the color scheme on this. It's very fall. It's it's early fall because there's still green in the trees, but then you get some like brown from the alpaca that's like the trunks and like maybe there's some maple trees in that bush I don't know I'm getting all artsy fartsy on myself but I, I just love the color blends so it may be something I'll have to do again the yarn itself came out really rough because I'm horrible um <laughs> I'm not generally horrible at long draw I didn't have much luck with it today I suspect it's because my fiber blend was not great so that will come with learning to use my blending board better. Um, so that's my big exciting news. I'm going to keep playing with it and hope I get better. I got all my luxury fibers from World of Wool. And then I have all these bits here. And I am going to keep playing with my blending board until I learn it better. Till I get comfortable with it. May have to watch some YouTube videos. I love YouTube videos. I always have it playing when I'm working. All right. So that's it for today, guys. If you like this, do the stuff down below. Because I do stuff like this all the time. Thanks, guys. Bye.